Hello and welcome to ShowMeAcademy.com. In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to use data validation in Microsoft Excel 2007. Data validation is a means that you can use to ensure that only data of a certain type or format or data within a certain range is allowed to be entered into any given cell or group of cells. The data validation that you can use in Excel is very much like the, the JavaScript validation that you might have seen on web pages where they ask you to fill out a form and then if you try to hit submit before you've entered the required information into the required fields, it tells you that something is wrong. Well, the validation for Excel works very much the same way, but on a cell by cell basis. If you've viewed our tutorial already on creating drop down menus, you've had some exposure to this already. Uh, drop down menus are created as a side effect of validation, but there's a lot more things, there are a lot of other things that you can do with validation as well, so we're going to take you through some of those options. First of all, uh, you'll see here I'm already on the data tab. That's the tab that you're going to want to start from. <clears throat> and there's under the data tools section, there's the data validation button. This is going to be our path that we use to get into all the data validation options. So first of all, what I'm going to do, uh, let's imagine that we're going to we're going to add some new rows down here to the bottom. But we want to make sure that the rows people add are of the proper type. So for example, the first row of rank should only be a whole number and it should never be less than zero, uh, less than one actually, and it should never be greater than 50 we'll say, assuming that we're not going to add too many teams. So I'm going to go up to data validation and click on this and under settings I'm going to tell it that I want it to allow only whole numbers and it's going to ask me for a range here. Now in this case Rather than, rather than saying between, I'm just going to say greater than, because we're going to say that the that the uh, the rank always has to be greater than zero, right? So we'll do that. I'll click OK. So now this is only going to accept whole numbers that are greater than zero. If I try to put something else, that gives me an error because even though that might be a textual way to express 33, it just sees that as nothing more than text. So if I put rated zero, it gives me an error as well, because again, it doesn't fall within the parameters that we gave it. If I say this is the ranking of 33, now we're fine, because that falls within the parameters of the data validation that we've given it. For the next one, if we're gonna add another team name, we might wanna make sure that there is text and maybe the text has to be of a certain length. We'll say that this text has to be greater than four characters because no no team name is ever going to be smaller than four characters. So then if we tried to just add something else here maybe we might say this, this is the New York Giants. It's going to give me an error because it's expecting four characters or more to be put in the team name field. You can also change this error, this error screen if you want. Right now when you do this and you click something, it gives you uh, a very antiseptic looking error message. It's generic and it's supposed to apply to any type of error. But we can change that as well. Let's go back to data validation. And this time, rather than working on the settings tab, I'm going to work on the error alert. And the error alert can give me two options here. One is the title. And next is the error message. You can also change the little symbol that pops up here as well. You can make it a warning symbol or an information symbol or a stop symbol. The title is, what, is whatever will go in the little window that pops up. So we'll say... Hey, stop it, and the error message will be I'll click OK. And now when we go back here and try to put in New York Giants, you see it says, hey, stop it. It still has the red stop symbol because I left it on that. And now it says you need to enter a longer team name. 
So now the error message, not only is it validating the data, but the error message it's giving is more customized to the nature of the error itself. You can even use this to make sure that people just don't enter anything else at all. You could argue that there are 32 two teams in the league right now, and you don't expect there to be a 33rd one for quite some time. So we could come here and say, you know what? You really shouldn't be entering any anything in these. So we'll say that this is a data validation, <clears throat> and we're going to make sure that it is a text length less than one. Okay. Now when I put anything in here, let's say the Orlando Magic, it gives me an error. Because I basically said that if anyone puts in anything that has a text length of less than one, or of greater than, uh, that's not less than one, that it's going to give me an error. Now I could even change my error message, go back to my data validation, let's make this a warning. And you, now you'll see that when I try to put something else in here, it tells me too many teams. You've entered more than 32 NFL teams. And you'll notice that when I went with the information one, now it gives me different options to continue, yes or no. We can also change the validation to look for different types of data as well. Let's, uh, let's get rid of all this here. And we can make sure, for example, that the games are going to be a whole number between 0 and 21 because ideally a team never plays has never played negative games and they've never played more than 21 games in a season so now, if I were to add a new line, that would be fine, as long as I didn't try to say that they'd play, I can say they played 13 games, or 15 games, or 18 games. But if I try to say that they played 25 games, again, my error validation comes up, tries to stop me. You can also make sure that we're going to put in something like a date. And anytime you put in dates, or numbers, or... Uh, any other type of validation, you can pick ranges. So you can say that this has to be uh, from a certain start date and at a certain date. You can also pick values that are elsewhere in the spreadsheet. So you could say that this whole number has to be greater than the number that exists on in this cell. So now we're going, to have, we're going to validate to make sure that the whole number is entered that's greater than whatever is the value of F2. We'll click OK. So now when I enter a new value in here, it gives me an error because it's not greater than the value of F2. Now if I go and change F2 to make be equal to 4, now when I put this here, now it's fine. But if I change F2 back to its original, which is, I think, 1,048 or something, and I try to put in 50, it gives me an error. In other words, the validation is dynamically pegged to the value of another cell. That concludes this tutorial. Thank you for using showmeacademy.com.